Hello, my name is Alex Chow, and today I'm going to go through a high-level introduction of Dynamics 365 Business Central. First, I'm going to do a quick overview of the menus when you first log into Business Central. Then we're going to go through navigating through the screens, uh, looking at the card and the list pages in the system. Lastly, we'll talk about extending the out-of-the-box Business Central and that you're not stuck with whatever Microsoft gives you as functionalities. You could always extend far beyond Business Central. When you first log into Business Central, the first thing you'll notice is that the screens are organized into tiles. Microsoft has put a lot of thought in designing this main menu. Traditionally, in other softwares, you would have to chase down the information. For example, in order to get simple sales order information, you would need to open that particular functional area in order to get the information. Not with Business Central. I could quickly, with the tiles, see my ongoing sales orders that are in the system. With Business Central, it tries to bring that information to you the first thing when you log in. That way, you can monitor potential problems at a glance. Now, these tiles are specific to you per the rule that you're assigned in Business Central. In my case, I'm logged in as the business manager. So the information and the tiles and any kind of numbers and statistics are, will pertain to me as a business manager. There are different profiles that are out of the box for Business Central. If you are assigned, for example, the order processor role, your tiles will be relevant for you as a order processor. You have a profile for account accounting manager, for accounts receivable curve, for warehouse person, so forth and so on. Next, we're gonna go over and navigate through Business Central. In Business Central, there are basically two main type of pages. One is the list page and the other is the card page. I'll be able to see a list of customers that are set up in the system. Any of these columns that I see in the list page, I can sort on. So for example, let's say by default, when you open the list page, it's gonna sort on the customer number. If you wanna sort on the name, you could simply click on the name and it will sort your list by name. If you wanna sort by the contact, you could just click on the contact and it will sort by the contact name. If I want additional detail on a particular customer, I can just click on the customer itself and it will bring me the card for this customer. Going down to the customer card, I can see the address information, I can see the contact, I can see any of the additional setups that was done for this particular customer. On the right hand side, I can see the different fact boxes that pertains to this customer. These fact boxes will give you additional information relating to this particular customer. So I can see the sales history. If I scroll down, I can see the quick statistics for this customer. Now switching gears, if I go to the items, by default, it will bring up a list of the items that I've set up in the system. Very similar to how the customer is laid out, I could search I can sort on the description, I can sort on the quantity at hand. Basically any field and columns that I have listed here, I'm able to sort on. And if I look, want to see more details on a particular item, I just click on this item number and it will bring me to the card information. One nice thing about the list page is that you are not stuck to seeing just the list. So for example, if I am on a trade show or I'm speaking with a customer and I want to show the customer the picture of the product that we're talking about, I could change the icon of the list page. So it will give me pictorial overview of the items. So from here, if I'm using a mobile device, I can scroll through and look at all of the items with their pictures. And if a particular item interests me or the customer, I could just click directly into it and it will bring up that particular item. Business Central is a full ERP system. That means it has financials, it has manufacturing capabilities, it has warehousing, it has service management, and other functionalities that's too many to list. To look at all the functionalities, I, all you need to do is click on explore other functionality and, and I'm gonna click on explore more roles. And you can see here, there are human resource, there are finance modules, there are manufacturing. Uh, if I keep scrolling down, there's warehousing. So any of these uh, features, uh, is ready to use out of the box with no additional installation. If there are some functionality you want to test out in a sandbox environment, you could easily do that without 
the involvement of your IT staff. So if I go to the admin center, I'll be able to see a list of the environments in the system. Of course, getting to the screen requires um, global admin permission. If I want to copy a production into a sandbox, all I need to do is click on the production environment and click on copy, and I could create a sandbox environment with just a few clicks. Last, I'm going to talk about extending Business Central. If there are certain functionalities that is not in the standard Business Central that you need, you could always go to the Extension Marketplace. Now, the Extension Marketplace is very similar to the App Store on your mobile device. Microsoft opened up Business Central, so any third-party developers can develop their solution either for a particular industry or enhancement to Business Central. A lot of these products have a free trial that you can try installing on your sandbox environment. The nice thing about these uh, extension is that you can install it, try it out, and if you don't like it, uninstall it. It won't hurt your data. So for example, if I need a better way to manage my freight containers coming in from my vendors overseas, I could search on freight container. From here, I could see that there are a couple of container apps that's available for download. If a particular app catches my interest, I can click on the icon and it will provide me with more details. I could click on this free trial and it will install the app for me on my Business Central environment. Now, if there are certain business processes that's unique to you and you cannot find any apps on the extension marketplace that fit your need, you can always create your own app. You're not limited to what Microsoft gives you or any other third-party developers. Microsoft is pretty open source in terms of extending the code. As long as you have license for Business Central, you're able to create extensions pertaining to your own tenants. Lastly, if you're using Office 365, Business Central is already tightly integrated with Office 365 ecosystem. You could use Par BI, Par Automate, any other Office 365 tools within Business Central. So for example, if I want to do some automation process with my sales orders, if I bring up a sales order, I can create a flow within Power Automate to automate certain tasks for me. If I'm familiar with using Power BI, I could create my own charts. I could associate with any roles in my environment. So just to wrap up, the benefits of uh, Dynamics 365 Business Central, it has a very intuitive user interface uh, in that Microsoft tries to align all of their products so users can jump between systems and they will not feel like it's a foreign product. It's built within the Office 365 ecosystem, so it's already tightly integrated with your Word document, your, uh, your Word application, your Excel, your Outlook, your Power uh, Platform, and any other Office 365 products Microsoft may create in the future. Lastly, you could extend. You're not stuck with whatever Microsoft gives out of the box. You can create your own extensions. You're not limited to what you have. And that's it. If you have any questions, please reach out to us. I will include our contact information in the notes below. Thank you. Have a nice day.